welcome to the Personal Development Mastery Podcast. I'm Maggie Keramidas and my mission is to inspire you to rise up, grow, stand out and take action towards the next level of your life. I interview leaders, influencers, entrepreneurs, authors, exceptional people who can and will inspire you to improve your life. Tune in for two episodes each week and make sure you subscribe to the podcast to get the episodes as soon as they are released. This is the second half of the conversation with Paul Shepard. If you haven't listened to the first part, tune in to the previous episode 107. Paul, I would like to ask you also about your uh, your mastery course. What you said that you've designed it from your uh, experience, from all the knowledge that you have accumulated with uh, your. So, can you tell me who is it for, really, and what kind of uh, experience uh, can someone? expect. The reason why I'm asking this is because you were saying earlier about other people's systems that work for them. So I want to understand how your system is different in in that way. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to share. Um, So part of my mission is to help people eliminate doubt, gain clarity and show them there's a better way. There's a better future. And my system, so to speak, isn't isn't necessarily my system. It is a system that shows the system of yourself. And that's the brilliance of it. That's part of it. So there's a, a few different components to it. The first part is using your time of birth. And that's usually a, a three, three 90-minute sessions I walk people through. And I explain to them those 16 success codes, you know, who they really are. And the amount of clarity that people get from that is... I mean, the comments I get is just, it's, it's mind-boggling. They're, they're absolutely fascinated. It's, and there's so much content um, that's very specific to the individual. You know, and to give you some context here, Argy, there's, you know, it's, it's not like there's, you know, 16 categories that people could fall into or five or 10 or whatever it is. There is a number of with, with 54 digits at the end of it. <laughs> right? That's more than any person that's uh, more than the total number of people that have walked the planet. So it's a, it's a, it's a system that shows you your own system. In other words, it's unique to every individual. And it's just a matter of me interpreting that and going through the framework to give that to you. And once we've done that, we then start to look at what the passions are and interview process where we start to see people's energetic responses and then some training so that you can start to practice this intuitive response, start to get a handle on it and start to train yourself and a whole bunch of exercises to then tap into that and then kind of be on your merry way so you can start living the life according to who you truly are and no longer start trying or no longer trying to fit into a definition of success that society said you should have, right? Go to school, get a job, you know, university, get married, have kids, buy a house, maybe write a book and die right um because divorce rates are ridiculous in terms of the numbers globally the amount of people that are unfulfilled even though they make a lot of money and i'm sure all your listeners have are in that same boat right they might be at the beginning of the journey they might be well into the journey they might be successful financially but there's something missing or they might be just getting started and i think if we start with a, with a definition of success that tackles all aspects of who we are not just the monetary or the material but the deep fulfillment as to who we truly are then we can actually invest our time into all of those areas not just not just one so that's essentially what my system does it it's it's a combination of different tools that i came across that unveils the the individual And it's unique for everyone. And once you've experienced it, you will know if that's right. I'm I'm, I'm not trying to convince you. It's like, this is, I'll explain things and you'll have this energetic response that, oh my gosh, yes, yes, yes. Or it'll be a no. So it's not like we're trying to force it. It's, uh, it's, It's just showing people themselves. And it's powerful. Absolutely. 
And I think we can all relate to a moment in our life when we had that realization, that deep feeling inside of us, that all of us knew that this is it, this is the truth. It was more that, than a bunch of thoughts. It was, a, you know, a, a whole understanding of, of the, the body and the mind and uh, and everything. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> But isn't it amazing how it's something so powerful that we all experience on a daily basis rarely gets talked about? Mm. You know, and, it, and, it's, and it's the greatest gift we can ever acknowledge within ourselves is these feelings that come up, but no one's ever taught us how to interpret them or listen to them. Yeah, you know, trust your gut, some people say, but, you know, people, other people laugh at that. Yeah, and that's okay. But I, I'd, I'd invite people to not laugh at things that could be some of the most profound things I'll ever learn. Just be curious instead. Mm-hmm. And I think um, a lot of your listeners will resonate with the fact that, you know, I don't know if you know the, the quantum stuff and what's going on in that space, but you know, learning lengthens the telomeres of our DNA, which reverses the aging process. So there's actually an incentive to continually learn. Let's get out of the fixed mindsets and let's uh, remain curious. Mm-hmm. And we reverse the aging process by doing so. And we, we, we love life and we, we learn so much more and we can make more of an impact when we do that. Fantastic. Um, I'm a very, very big uh, proponent of learning. I'm, you know, a lifelong learner. That's what I say to myself. I can see yeah. a bookshelf behind you. <laughs> <laughs> it's huge. Yeah, it is a symbol <laughs> of that, yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we, we either grow or die, as Einstein said. It's the, the, the knowledge and the growing. Um, Paul, there is also something that uh, caught my attention when I was uh, reading uh, your uh, website. It was, you said something about time, uh, about managing time. And I like the way that you said it, uh, stop wasting time trying to manage your time. So that was a very interesting way to put it. And you uh, propose to manage your energy instead, which is ours to manage, whereas time is... Uh, it's not ours. So I would like uh, your thoughts uh, on this as well, please. Oh, you noticed that. You're very observant. <laughs> <laughs> very curious. Um, I know it's a big topic. <laughs> no, it is. It is. And it's, it's pretty important too. It's, it is it's, indeed. I think we all agree there's only 24 hours in a day, which is a, which is a human construct. We've come up with that concept. But... I want you to think about tasks that you love doing versus tasks that you hate doing. And I know for me, when it's a task that I hate doing, I procrastinate, I delay doing it. It drains my energy. And then time speeds up. But when I'm doing something I love, I'm I'm energized, I'm in flow. All right. And and think about that, right? There's, there's only a certain number of breaths that you'll take in this lifetime, only a certain number of hours you'll live, so many days, weeks, months, and years. And if we're constantly trying to manage the time itself, where we're not living, you know, we're all designed to do something and we should do what moves us. And if we're getting an energetic response that says, no, that's not for me, you know, it's like if I said to you, Agi, let's go and... I don't know, let's go dig trenches all day. You're probably not going to be too enthusiastic about that energetically versus if I said, okay, let's go to this event over in Prague and meet some amazing people and learn some cool new things, you're probably going to jump at the opportunity, right? Um, And that's what I mean by managing our energy. If we're doing things that drain us, spending time with people that drain our energy, doing the tasks, uh, doing the, the, the jobs we hate, working around or a certain environment that we don't enjoy, it's draining our energy. It's draining our life force and it's draining our health. So this, this whole concept of time is just a human construct. And if you've ever studied the whole space and there's a whole bunch of stuff I've learned about space, time, time, space, you know, it's just, it's a, 
slight frequency shift and all of a sudden time doesn't exist. And if you go back through ancient texts, there's very clear examples of where time does not exist. It's only in this plane that time exists. So that got me curious and thinking. And, you know, if you start looking at um, in the, in the, into the quantum physics realm where, they've, where they're doing this, and I can't remember the name, there's a big facility in Europe, actually, that's a big circuit. Yeah, it's the where they can, CERN. CERN. The CERN, yeah. That's right. So, you know, what are they doing there? All these different experiments around time and atoms and energy and the whole lot. So my philosophy now is let's learn to manage our energy it's only doing those things that we're born to do and we won't be worried about time anymore you know every day will be fulfilling if we're present in the moment doing what we love doing what we're designed to do um, bringing our gifts to the world then time doesn't matter how many people sit there and watch the clock at work going i can't wait till five o'clock <laughs> <laughs> you know oh it's monday morning again right sunday night this this oh my gosh i want to get to work on monday um that's that's when we know we're not in the right place but when you're doing what you love and, and you, you obviously love what you do i guess is, is, is these conversations with people and, and this learning you could you could do this for hours and you'd never sit there looking at the clock worried about it because you're you're totally present so that's that's the simplest way i can explain it for now without going for two hours uh, yeah (laughs) no thank you for explaining that it makes sense and uh, i believe people can relate to to that especially the things we like doing versus the things we don't like doing and how the time feels and uh, everything that comes with it Uh, Mm. (laughs) absolutely Uh, so paul we have talked about uh, all sorts of uh, different things and your uh, knowledge is and what you shared is truly fascinating and I can resonate with your and I think your main message comes across, across loud and clear for me anyway I could I could get this kind of uh, you know realize who you truly are and then you can be the best that you can because you go with what you truly really inside you and uh, you fulfill you feel fulfilled and you fulfill what is meant for you. So that, that's how I, let's say, interpret the message that you have been uh, sharing uh, with us. So I, I hope I'm not very much off. <laughs> uh, I, would like to, <laughs> I would like to ask also some uh, quick fire questions to start uh, wrapping uh, some things up. So, uh, and this, the first one, I always ask you, I would be very much interested in your point of view because of your 25-year experience. So what does personal development mean to you now? <laughs> hmm, that's a good question. It's changed over the time. Uh, I would say it's still about moving forward in life. So expansion. Personal development is still about the expansion of my um, my consciousness mm-hmm. and the expansion of my comfort zone in a succinct way. That's as simple as I can put it. Thank you. Um, and let's say you could go back in time and meet your 18-year-old self. What's the one piece of advice you would give the young Paul? <laughs> <laughs> Don't be so stubborn. <laughs> Definitely. Um, yeah, like I think I was, I was very ambitious as a kid and so disconnected mm-hmm. intuitively, very disconnected. And as a result, that was, that was a, a lifetime of suffering. Um, obviously some great times too, but um, a lot of pain because I, I just couldn't hear the messages. So I couldn't hear the feathers, the pebbles and the rocks. And even the bricks I'd ignore, mm. right? So um, that's my biggest lesson is to go back and say, hey, when these things happen, they're, they're signs. Listen to them <laughs> and pivot. Don't keep going. That, that, that for sure. Yeah. Solid piece of advice indeed. <laughs> uh, say you had a, a magic wand and you could wave it and change something in the world as it is today. Uh, what would that be? 
oh, my, my ego would say, let's just make, wave, wave the wand and make COVID disappear. But uh, my spiritual side knows that that's also something that's meant to happen as well. We are exactly where we are for a reason. Mm-hmm. Magic wands, look, um, to make more impact. You know, I have this, this belief now that I understand how things work on a much deeper level and I'm not saying I know everything because I'm, I'm still learning, I'm still a student of life and I always will be, but, you know, I, I'd love to be in a position where I could help a lot more people with with these messages and things that I've learned. Mm-hmm. You know, I think we're all it's a lot of frustrated people walking around the world broadcasting incoherent frequencies into the field and that causes conflict, it causes uh, static, if, if you will. And if, if even just a small percentage of population could be living authentically mm-hmm. and doing what they're designed to do and broadcasting coherent frequencies, that would act as a ripple effect. You know, the 100 people impact 1,000 people, that impacts 10,000 people, that impacts a million people. Mm-hmm. So I'd like to be doing more of that. And that's, that's how I can contribute and make the world a better place. You, you said about... Uh... COVID, the situation being as it is for for a reason. And even though I, I, I completely agree and I understand, but would you like to expand on that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, I think I think we're souls having this experience, this human experience on in, on this plane at this point in time. Mm-hmm. And I, from what I've learned now through many different teachers, mm-hmm. you know, we've all chosen to come here. You know, this isn't like we're victims of this catastrophic event. This is all yeah. part of the school of life, you know. Um, it's very spiritual. It's very out there. It's very kind of woo-woo. But I believe that we're all here for a reason, mm-hmm. you know, and things are exactly as they need to be right now. So if we take the kind of the victim hat off, the victim mask, and take full responsibility for who we are and why we're here, mm-hmm. then, you know, as frightening as it might be and, and what's coming down the pipe, um, and what the future may look like, I think it's there's always a, a silver lining as well. There's there's always two sides. The light needs the dark. The dark needs the light. And we're going through this experience because there are lessons for us all. And I think that's why we're all here mm-hmm. to to evolve. And uh, anyone that is here is obviously here for that reason. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here in the first place. So that's my understanding of our reality right now. Certainly. Paul, is there a, any big breakthrough that you had uh, recently that you would like to share with us? Surrender. That was something I learned a few couple of years ago now. Mm-hmm. And I read Michael Singer's book, The Surrender Experiment. Yes. And that really made me reflect. That was a big, big lesson for me, actually. Um, especially because I couldn't recognize the bricks that were being thrown at me. I... I had to learn to surrender. And, and the moment I surrender, even a project I was working on 18 months ago, so I was running a global health brand and um, it was tough. There's a lot of friction, a lot of resistance in all aspects of that, what we were doing. And I literally just left and went overseas for a couple of weeks and just let go of everything. I totally surrendered and magic happened. I had no idea how I was going to, you know, survive what I was going to do. I'd lost this identity. I'd lost this business. I'd lost this and I walked away from it because it wasn't right. And there was this, this so much resistance, but the surrender experiment for me was, was liberating. It was freeing. And once I had fully surrendered, new opportunities came in the right opportunities. And I would, I was a lot more in tune with what was right versus what wasn't right for me. Mm-hmm. So um, that's hard to do for, for someone who likes, to control their their reality. Yeah. And a lot of your listeners probably like to, to have control of their life. But surrendering was one of the most powerful experiences. That taught me a lot. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, would you You're like welcome. to also share uh, a big mistake that you've made recently so hopefully we can avoid doing the same one? <laughs> I've got a million mistakes I've made. <laughs> um, yeah, look, I see them all as lessons now. You know, I, I think um, 
probably the, the the biggest mistake recently. I can't think of anything that comes to mind recently, but but that whole not surrendering, you know, hanging on to something that isn't right out of fear. So coming from a place of fear, mm-hmm. trying to hang on a job or hang on to a job that wasn't right for me or holding on to a company. And I had to, there was a company I was involved with last year actually and I just wasn't excited about it. It had the potential to make a lot of money in a, in a booming industry, in a very, very kind of very wealthy industry, mm-hmm. but I just wasn't compelled. And I, and I stuck around for 12 months mm. knowing it wasn't right, knowing what I know about the intuition and everything else. And I love the people I was working with, but then there was this, there's this burning inside of me going, it's not right for you, Paul. It's not right for you. It's not right for you. And I wasn't excited about showing up for the meetings and I wasn't excited about doing the work. And I just, and the moment I said, no, I can't do this was when I'd realized I'd, I'd, I'd made the mistake of staying into this business for, for a year when I should have said no to begin with, mm-hmm. even knowing what I know now about listening to my intuition. So shame on you, Paul, but um. Yeah, so we still make mistakes, even though we we know these things. But the temptation of, you know, how this could make an impact, having the the income that could make an impact on so many people's lives mm. was was tempting, right? So um, yeah, that was a that was a recent mistake that probably middle of last year I walked away from. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Lucky it didn't cost me a fortune like previous mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> um. Paul, is there anything you were hoping that we would discuss about today and we completely missed it? No. Funny enough. I think my intention with our conversation today, Agi, was to just connect and, and go with the flow. And I think we're on a similar journey when reading your story. There's so many parallels between our stories, you know. And uh, just from the fact that and the highlight was the fact that one of your friends became a shaman when you're going through being a dentist, um, very similar story to, to what I went through as well, mm-hmm. you know, seeing and meeting shamans and healers. So um, now it's been a pleasure and an honor to, to have this conversation with you. And, you know, I'm sure we'll have many more conversations in the future. Mm-hmm. So no, thank you. I, I, and I'm sharing this with everyone listening that I felt instantly like I've known you when, when we, it's the first time we, we speak to each other, but I felt like uh, we've known each other. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe we Likewise. have. <laughs> um, Past life somewhere for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, uh, I'm, I'm uh, very uh, big on giving to the listener always uh, something actionable. Uh, and we've, you've already mentioned a few bits, but uh, now that we're towards the end, emerging from this conversation, give to the listener one actionable item they can implement uh, straight away or tomorrow to take their life to the next level. Yeah, I, I would, my biggest takeaway would be st- stop chasing something outside yourself. Mm-hmm. Stop pursuing the next best thing, the next shiny object. Entrepreneurs, we've got that constantly. <laughs> I think... Um, the biggest lesson for us all is to go within. And you can start that today by downloading a meditation, for example. Mm -hmm. You can start practicing some of the examples I mentioned around calibrating your intuition, right? So it could be uh, when it comes to dating, it could be with your colleagues, it could be just watching people walk past the street. You know, it could be walking into a restaurant or a cafe going, "Hmm, I wonder what that person's going through. And if you can have the conversation, with them to get some sort of feedback you can just set up really simple experiments you know um i wonder you know is that person having a good day based on their energy levels Mm. and you can ask them hey good morning good evening are you having a good day and it might jolt them at first but um that's a really simple thing you can do to start to listen to yourself and 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 trust that and the more that you practice that the more you will trust it. And the more you trust it, the better the decisions you are or the better decisions you'll make and the faster you'll get on your own path in life. And then you'll know which programs are right for you. 
And you will find what we all look for in, in our life, which I think it is fulfillment. Many people say happiness, but I think what they mean is fulfillment rather than happiness, yeah. which is the... Uh, and <laughs> it's been a... a I agree, Agi. <laughs> Uh, Paul, how can uh, people find out more about you and connect? Yeah, uh, Paul B. for Bravo, Shepherd, uh, as in the biblical text. So Paul B. Shepherd, S-H-E-P-H-E-R-D dot com. There's a, I got a blog there. I've got a whole bunch of downloads for people, some quizzes. And very soon, and probably by this time this has been published, we'll have a group, a community online where people can come and learn more about some of these tools at, uh, for free. So I'd recommend just subscribing to my mailing list, uh, downloading some of the content on my site and stay connected because there's a lot of a lot of valuable stuff that I want to share over the coming months and uh, years. And it's the best place to start just, uh, just get in contact one way or another. Fantastic. Um, uh, before we go, I want to share uh, something uh, that I found uh, um, out of this conversation, my own uh, takeaway, and uh, I already mentioned it, but I will reiterate it. Uh, I think it came across very clearly throughout our conversation, your message. So for me, it was uh, an obvious reminder for me, and I hope that uh, the listener can get that as well, that uh, we have to follow along with what is our calling. I will use the word calling. I don't want to use, uh, I could use other words, but calling, shall we say, it sounds more inviting. So let's follow that. And when we have things happening in our life that uh, do not go as forward, what you were saying about the, the, the bricks, <laughs> really pay attention yeah. to them. And because nothing happens at random, there is a, a meaning. So if everything is going downwards, there is something that we need to change uh, in our life. So that was, I just reiterated it, Paul, because it is uh, something that I have personally felt and it's important for someone to realize that uh, misfortunes or accidents or uh, illnesses, serious ones, I mean, uh, happen as it, it is a warning or a sign or something to pay attention to. It's not you know, a, a random event that, oh, it happened and uh, because I'm unlucky. <laughs> yes. I totally agree with you. And that's, that's empowering, isn't it? When you can, when we can look at these events or circumstances as lessons as opposed to punishments. Yes. Um, we move away from being a victim and into an empowered state of being the, the master of our own destiny. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that is that is truly empowering. If if in fact that's a lesson, that's a key takeaway for anyone listening <laughs> to this one as well is is uh, yeah. if you can recognize those key events, those those traumas in life, those setbacks, those painful times as corrections, if if you will, mm -hmm. um, you'll be empowered as opposed to being a victim. Mm. And yeah, you can shape your destiny that way. I agree. Paul, I want to thank you very much for your uh, time and for the conversation we had today. And it was exceptional. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I wish you all the very best with uh, your life and your mission. Um, any parting words? I'd like to thank you too, Agi. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, and yeah, I do feel we're connected on a, on a different level and have done in the past somehow. There is definitely a connection there. So... I wish you and your listeners all the best and um, just invite everyone to, to tune in, tune in to yourself. So um, thank you for your time and thank you for your listeners' time and I wish you all the best. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe and rate Personal Development Mastery on Apple Podcasts and also share this episode with someone who you think will benefit from it. If you want to become part of an exclusive community, gain access to unique content and at the same time support this podcast, then become my patron. The link is in the show notes or you can type bit.ly slash pdmpat. If you want to know more about what I do and how I can help you, join my Facebook group Personal Development Mastery. 
Again, the link is in the show notes or you can simply type bit.ly slash PDM group. And until next time, stand out, don't fit in, 